everything there is to know about electrophilic aromatic substitution, why don't we go through some examples? All right, halogenation. Halogenation is a big one. We already know that what we have to do is activate our electrophile by coordinating our lone pair on chlorine to the aluminum trichloride. That generates this wacky intermediate, uh, actually a transition state, where we're just kind of dotting, dotting, dotting ugh, this complex. And we're trying to break this bond and form this bond, and that's exactly what happens. So there's a buildup of delta positive here in this transition state, and a buildup of delta minus here. And ultimately, we end up with our super powerful chlorine electrophile. It's not chlorine, it's, I think it's chloronium. I don't know really what you call that thing, but anyhow, once you have that, that is a nice strong electrophile that can then react with our benzene nucleophile, our relatively, well, not relatively, really weak pi nucleophile. So there's my pi electrons. Come out in this good old fashioned electrophilic addition reaction, which we've seen before. So electrophilic addition of the Cl plus to my benzene gives me this high energy intermediate, a carbocation, which now, since it really, really, really wants to get back to being the nice, super stable aromatic compound, is going to undergo an elimination reaction. So some base, and that's kind of the problem, what's basic when we're talking about this kind of wacky, Oof, strongly electrophilic medium. Well, who knows what the base is, basically. <laughs> it's got to be something associated with the aluminate, so we'll say it's AlCl4 minus. Who the heck knows? And that guy is just going to go ahead and do a E1 step, right? Where I just remove the beta hydrogen, and that takes me straight away to my nice stable product. So this is very neatly summarized in the reaction coordinate, the energy diagram. So let's go through it. Basically what we see is we have some nice stable starting materials, our chlorine electrophile and our benzene nucleophile, very weak, that get activated in the presence of the AlCl3 to allow the generation of Cl plus. Cl plus then takes us all the way up that energy hill to this high energy carbocation intermediate. Super high energy because not only is it a carbocation, it's lost its aromaticity. What next? Oof, the next step in this two step mechanism then is super fast, way down the energy hill because we're going from an unstable intermediate to a nice stable aromatic product. So basically electrophilic aromatic substitution here is a two-step reaction. The first step is the rate determining step and because both benzene and chlorine are involved in that first step it's a second order reactions, second order rate law. Remember we sum the exponents here and so that is our, uh, excuse me while I talk to my iPad here. Okay, that is basically the story of the kinetics of this reaction. So it's a two-stepper, second order rate law, and the first step is the rate determining step because you've got this huge delta G double dagger. And the second step, holy cow, super fast because just focus in this is your teeny T9C energy of activation for the second step so it happens boom in a heartbeat. Alright so what else can happen? Well 
Another example of halogenation is one that should be familiar to any of you who are in the ITR class because yes indeed you do. You did do this electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction. Remember that yes 3 hexyl thiophene, this guy right here, is aromatic. And so it's pretty electron rich for an aromatic molecule. It's a little bit more reactive than say benzene because of the, the sulfur in its lone pairs. So you didn't have to heat this up to who knows what to get this reaction to go. It worked pretty well and you now of course know that NBS is a good electrophilic deliverer of bromine. So what happens here? Well, you basically get substitution. At least that's what we did in ITR. We added enough NBS to get this electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction to take place at both of these hydrogens. And I would certainly recommend that everyone, ITR or no, review this reaction and work through the mechanism because it's a really good example of EAS. All right, well, we are halogenating right and left. What about halogenation with fluorine or halogenation with iodine? Woohoo! Fluorine is spooky, scary stuff. Uh, fluorine likes to, you know, do explosive kind of chemistry. So we don't do fluorine so much. And iodine is a completely different beastie. So we'll see something with iodine later on. Generally, these halogenation reactions are just with bromine and chlorine. And that's good. It's good to know how to put a bromine on an aromatic ring because, of course, if we have something like this, we can then make it into an even stronger nucleophile like this, which is all good. But how about putting an alkyl group on an aromatic ring? Well, that's the realm of Friedel-Crafts chemistry. Friedel and Crafts are two chemists who, you know, basically discovered the reaction. So what do you need? You need a strong carbon electrophile. So same old, same old. Addition of the carbocation to the pi, weak pi nucleophile gives you the carbocation intermediate. Then you do the... You know, this is getting kind of redundant here, right? Take my base, deprotonate in an E1 fashion. There's my stable product. Yes. So, where do I come up with this carbon electrophile? Well, same place you, you always have. Anything that could generate a carbocation is potentially an electrophile for Friedel Crafts. So that means something like an alkyne an alkene, an alcohol, a halide, you name it. They're all potential electrophiles for Friedel Crafts. So for example, if I take, again, a weak pi nucleophile, this methylcyclopentene, and add a strong negative pKa acid to it, I will get a carbocation. Once I have that carbocation, my pi electrons can react. Basically what you're going to do, we should just go ahead and put the benzene underneath the arrow, because basically if I just take this and dissolve it up in some benzene, add a little acid, then we can get this reaction to go. In other words, benzene is my solvent. Alright, so benzene attacks, I get the carbocation intermediate, deprotonation, there we go. There's my product. What do you think about that stereochemistry? Is this going to be a racemic mixture? Hmm, you should think about that. All right, how about this ester? Well, esters can be protonated. Right. Protonation of that carboxyl group. Do, do, do. O, C, O, H, C, H, 3. Well, under highly polar product conditions, especially if you add a little energy in the form of heat, oh, I think this is going to happen. So that should lose my leaving group, generate the carbocation. Carbocation can then react with my benzene. And what do I get? I get carbocation intermediate, 
deprotonation. Do, 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 do. Let's see. Nope. There we go. Got a sloppy mess here. There we go. Whew, that was tough. Now I can take my base, whatever it is, deprotonate, and there you go. So, mechanism the same, the same, the same. Now, how's about this example? Freed a chemist, took one chlorobutane, activated the chlorine with aluminum trichloride, just like we've seen all along, dissolved it all up in benzene, and this is what she got. This proton NMR of her purified product, a nice, clear, colorless liquid, gave this. Well, hmm. For you started thinking about it, said, hmm, that seems a little fishy. Particularly those integral values don't make sense. I'm hoping to get this. And clearly, that would be a 2 to 2 to 2 to 3 plus my 5 aromatic hydrogens. And I would expect this to be a triplet, and this to be a triplet, and these would both be multiplets. And that's sure as shooting, not what I have up here. Ah, that's not even remotely close. So, here is the spectrum of the desired product. You can see how different they are. So what happened? What did Frida get? Well, Frida has the problem that we have seen before of when I have my chlorobutane starting to coordinate to my aluminum trichloride, And let's just fix this dumb mistake here. I uh, have. A, let's just well, let's just erase all. Let's try this again. When I have my aluminum trichloride coordinating to my one chlorobutane, so I got dot 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 dot. Okay, so here is my 1-chlorobutane. I'm starting to generate a delta positive here, delta negative here. This bond is starting to break. So that's a little dot, 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 dot. And as this is happening, Cardi says you make this primary carbocation. I'm not convinced. But in any case, you know what's going to happen. You're going to get a 1-2 shift. So that guy is going to zip over, and you will end up with secondary, more stable carbocation, and other words, rearrangement. Rearrangements happen. Remember, they're always going to be uh, danger if you're talking carbocations. So that in fact is exactly what we have here. We have made not N-butylbenzene, but in fact we have made, or Frida I should say, has made sec-butylbenzene, where we've got our five aromatic hydrogens, we've got a doublet, Right there, we've got a triplet right there. This little guy is a messy multiplet there, and the CH2 group is a multi messy multiplet there. So beware, beware.
of rearrangements in electrophilic aromatic substitution. All right, so how do we avoid them? Say I want to make this hexyl benzene. Hmm, two, four, six, a heptyl benzene. Well, the best way to do this is to, well, one of the best ways to do this is to go via Friedel Crafts acylation because you know that if you can make this ketone then you can do a reduction say Wolf Kishner or Clemenson or even the Rainy Nickel route that will take you straight away to the alkyl group so how do I do Friedel Crafts acylation piece of cake all I have to do is add the acyl chloride, the acid chloride, to my benzene. And it's the same sort of deal. I need something to activate the chlorine leaving group, so I'll use, again, aluminum trichloride. It's just the most common Lewis acid that's used, but you could use PCL3. You could use any number. You could have iron chloride. You name it. Generally, you heat these things up to a ridiculous temperature, <clears throat> reflux it for several hours, and then at the end of the day, you have this rock solid product. So, how does this work? Well, same as the other one. AlCl3 pops off the chlorine, but now that's assisted by the lone pair on oxygen. So, that gives you this acylium ion, as we saw in the previous mini lecture. And that acylium ion is very susceptible to attack by your nucleophile. So if I just put my benzene over here, do 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 do, do just take your pi electrons, react, pop those guys up. You know the rest of the mechanism. There's your product. Reduce it down to make your alkyl benzene. So the acylium ion being resonance stabilized does not undergo rearrangements. No rearrangement. So that is a workaround for putting an alkyl group on an aromatic ring. So what next? Um, what next? We already saw the mechanism in the previous slide. Here. You fill it in here. How's that? Now what next is what's coming up. Those are not the only electrophiles, but it is the same old, same old mechanism. So we'll look at the um, reagents that are used to go from benzene to a nitrobenzene and benzene to a sulfonyl benzene. That's SO3H. But I've been um, lax on having jokes, so I thought I'd finish up with this one, giving you some unsolicited advice. I realize that, and it's really kind of dangerous for me to go here, but I would say never, ever marry a tennis player. Why? Because to them, love means nothing. <laughs> See you in class.